It has to be incredibly weird for you to watch a college student defend the resolution that higher education is overrated. I'll admit that it's weird at the beginning. However, when we were setting up this debate, I decided I was going to take a risk. That I was going to do something I'm not even sure is legal in debate. And that is I'm going to be honest with you. As a college student, on the inside of higher education, I can tell you right now that higher education is absolutely overrated. And over the next four to five minutes, it is my job to demonstrate that to you. First off, let's just have a few definitions so that we can make sure that we're on the same page. And these all come from Marion Webster. So higher education means education beyond a high school, especially at a college university. Overrated means having a higher opinion of than deserved. I think that's fairly clear. There's nothing sneaky going on here. We just want to make sure that we're on the same page. Therefore, to win this debate, my burden is to show that higher education is in fact overrated, that people have a higher opinion of it than it deserves. In order to win this debate, my learned opponent need merely demonstrate the opposite. So with that said, I have three major sets of arguments that I would like to make. And the argument I'd like to start with is I'm sorry, but college won't get you hired. So we all know that the old ways are changing. It used to be that a time in high school would guarantee you a good life, that a college degree would guarantee you a good life. But that's not true anymore, even for the MAs and PhDs. Please don't take it from me. The good folks at Forbes on May of 2013 revealed that half of college graduates work at a job that doesn't require a degree in that field. The Harvard Business Review, July 2010, put on their snootiest accents when they said that higher education doesn't lead to more and better jobs, and that it's time to challenge that myth instead of uncritically believing that higher education is always good. Investor Mark Cuban told Incorporated Magazine that the student loan bubble is the next bubble that's going to explode on us. And the Project on Student Debt revealed that the average debt upon graduation is $24,000, and that even counts at the college that I go to where your credits are $46 per unit. So the Chicago Tribune reported on August 24, 2016, that there's $1.26 trillion in the cost of the student loan bubble, and that's increasing all the time. So in other words, this is getting worse and worse. In fact, Peter Thiel even offers a $100,000 scholarship for people to quit school and go into the workforce so they don't end up with the same debt. So millennials, I'm sorry to say it, but if you feel like you got screwed, you did because college for you is overrated. The next argument I want to make is that the image of college is way better than the reality. We're all familiar with the college movies, our animal houses, our accepteds, our PCUs, and so forth. The college comedy of no responsibility, very little to do and nothing to do but run around with freedom from your parents, being sexually adventurous and binge drinking while you do drugs. All of these things are awful. Binge drinking is dangerous and doing drugs will kill you if you're not very lucky. I just want to take a second and remember the ones who should be here today because they experience why that actually is overrated. So as we move on, remember, college degrees make this more difficult and your so-called freedom to explore is getting smaller and smaller as college goes from exploration to program planning. So if you were expecting to go to college to get a college movie, I'm so sorry. College for you is overrated. The last major argument I'd like to make is that college is dangerous. Look, I wish this wasn't true, but it is. The Huffington Post quoted the common statistic on September 28, 2015, that one in four women in college will be sexually assaulted or attacked. The Atlantic Magazine reported on September 22, 2015, that this is worse for the LGBTQA youth. And don't take my word for it. Go look up your campus Cleary report. That's C-L-E-R-Y. You can see for yourself every crime that's been committed on that campus and all of the horrible things that have happened there over the course of the years. I would be remiss, of course, for not mentioning that this is worse for men of color who are at the highest risk of the school-to-prison pipeline and of failing out, and the differently abled, many times, who go through this nightmare of trying to get basic ADA compliance in order to get there. There's even arguments between all of these colleges of which is the most dangerous, and they're all over the web. In closing, it doesn't have to be this way. College doesn't have to be overrated, but until we face up with what's wrong with it, college will always be overrated. 
and I'm so sorry if you got cheated. That was brilliant, thank you very much. Let's start with burdens. You said that if people give it greater value than college is actually worth, then it is overrated. So if I show that people do not value it, does that mean I win the debate? That's an excellent question. I would say that the question is not do not value. It's that if they say that they do value, and I say that they value it too much, I think that is what has to happen on the details. Okay, so no comment? Is that what the response is? No, I guess what I'm saying is, I'm not going to let you say that college is worthless and give you the chance to outlove me. Okay, so if I point out that U.S. culture doesn't really value higher education in the first place, how does that play out in the round? Interesting. I think you can definitely make the arguments about how we don't value higher education. However, I think if we can prove that people value it at all, then that puts the debate back in play. So I think that you would have to prove that no one values college, or that everyone values it at nothing. Okay, so what's the difference between higher education being expensive and it being overrated? By the definition we went over, it's when people think it's more respectable or think that it's more important than it deserves. And the way you measure that is through money? No, the way I measure that is through money, and dead people, and assaults, and the number of other horrible things. Money is just one aspect. Would a return on investment be a legitimate way to value something? Return on investment would be a great way to value something. So, if I show that the return with education exceeds the investment, then I win? I think if you can prove that, and it outweighs the other two major arguments, then yes, you absolutely win. Okay, thanks. Yes, we have to show where society currently rates the value of higher education. Therefore, it would be my ability to show that if there isn't that high a value on higher education, like looking at certain cultural cues, that would stand to reason that it's not overrated. It might even be underrated so that many people look at higher education as a waste of time or a waste of money. That would actually be proving the opposite, and that should be my ground in this round. I'm going to do exactly that, but I'm going to start off with my argument that agreeing with this resolution as an audience member stratifies society. If you believe that higher education is overrated, then there are certain implications that come with that statement that are horrible for our society. First, let's take a look at the term overrated. Very recently, the term overrated was used by Donald Trump to refer to Meryl Streep being an overrated actress, something to delegitimize her and start some kind of boycott on her movies. Therefore, agreeing with this resolution would also have that effect on our society. Secondly, the resolution legitimizes denying people higher education because if it's overrated, then there is no reason we have to provide it to anybody like Finland does for free or other countries are doing it for free. If it is overrated, why would we ever invest in it? Because obviously the affirmative believes that the return on investment is so low or in the negative column that we don't have to invest in it whatsoever. Third, access to higher education will only concentrate power within the wealthy. If you believe that higher education is overrated as a society, I can guarantee you that there is a group of people that won't agree with that. And those are rich people. They have always understood how important higher education is. They always send their kids to the best schools. They pay for a building to get them there, despite the fact that they have never passed a class legitimately. If you legitimize this resolution by agreeing with it, the ripple effect that that has will actually make things worse. I have a few other things I'm going to apply to case. First, he says that Forbes is talking about how you don't have to have a degree in order to get a job. That is absolutely not true. Maybe you can find exceptions, but the general rule is that a higher education degree gets you income twice that of somebody who doesn't have that degree. The return on investment, according to the Chronicle of Higher Education, is 7 to 1. If you invest $1 to education, whether it is to the government or your individual pocketbook, you get $7 back 
within your lifetime. The return on investment still exists, even in the United States where higher education is expensive. My next argument is higher education being expensive is not the same thing as higher education being overrated. Those are not synonyms. You can have something that is expensive and still have great value to it. And higher education is absolutely one of those things. Let's move on to his next argument. I would say that the $100,000 scholarship to not go to school shows that he's only giving that to people that are in college. And there is a reason why he's doing that, because he knows that people that got into college are worth it. He's not going to do that to some random person. He's not going to do that to somebody who didn't get accepted to college. I think that it shows the opposite. The Forbes analysis that states getting a job doesn't require a degree. Well, Forbes is an excellent example of a conservative publication that would love to continue the stratification of American citizens, that would love to make it so they have peons that are working for them at entry-level positions, so they can hire their cousin who has gone through Harvard because their uncle paid for a building. I think we are smarter than that. And the reason why we are smarter than that is because we go to college and we can see through those lies. He talked about how there is a lot of drug use and binge drinking. First off, that is decreasing right now at astronomical rates, as are other risky behaviors, such as unprotected sex amongst millennial population. That seemed to be something that was big in the baby boom generation. That's more about generation, not a result of higher education. But NPR points out that women who have higher education are far less likely to accept domestic abuse than women who do not receive a higher education. So, if you think that it is dangerous to go to college, I can tell you something that is far more dangerous. That is ignorance. If you don't know how to access a lawyer, if you don't know how to file paperwork, if you're not brave enough to do these things, that is far more dangerous to someone's life. These things exist, and knowing how they exist and how to deal with them is an important part of our society. And higher education is one thing that does that. It is nowhere near overrated. It is more valuable than ever. That was brilliant. Mind if I ask you a few questions? Not at all. Are you going for colleges worthless or colleges undervalued? You're going for colleges worthless. I'm saying that yes, it is undervalued. We should invest more. So your impressions of something's value, as you asked me, is by money. Is that correct? I could defend that for sure, but I think that the way people are able to protect themselves, especially women that might be victims of domestic abuse, is a pretty damn good benefit. Naturally, then, in your view, this is the only way for people to defend themselves? It tends to be better than not having a higher education. So if it turns out that college is dangerous and people end up accidentally developing these skills firsthand, that's just something that happens? I think that the development of these skills happen, but higher education is a way to address those things head on. Not ignore them, not suppress it, or intimidate people into not speaking up against it. And how are young men of color and differently able doing in this undervalued college you speak of? They earn more money and have more power at the end of their higher education degree than those who don't. 24000 in debt then, on average, remember not maximum, is just collateral damage? They get a higher return on their investment. That debt exists even if they don't go to college. They get wrapped up in credit cards, bad loans, they get horrible mortgage rates. And why are bad loans bad? Because people don't understand and can't read the damn contract because they haven't gone through higher education. In other terms then, reading will save you. A lot of times, yes. I want to start on the idea of the image of college. Because what he has shown is that college can be beneficial. He has yet to show you that college is undervalued in any way. In other words, it can be useful. But the question isn't, is it useful? It's, do you think it's as useful as it's actually going to be? I'm going to start at the most important part, which is that college is dangerous. My opponent seems to think that this will just solve itself because when people get to college, they will magically develop critical thinking skills that will keep them safe from the orgy of drugs and violence that surrounds them. I disagree because of the time frame of these horrible events. Normally, it's freshmen who experience these kind of folks, or folks who have just transferred, whereas a lot of the skills he's talking about develop more slowly over time. That means it's too late for the one in four women that the Huffington Post explains will be attacked or sexually assaulted 
while they're in school. For his argument to be true, you had to go into college thinking, this is a dangerous place, and I need to be aware of it. I'm not sure that's everyone's impression, and the ones who are with us, I think they would agree with that. Let's go to a couple of his arguments at the very beginning. Now he says that this is an excuse to delegitimize college. My first response is, sorry bro, saw you coming. Recall my closing argument in the first speech, college doesn't have to be this way. But if we can't honestly take on these flaws, if we just paper over it as the idea that, no, college is wonderful and you're going to learn all these critical thinking skills and don't worry about the sexual assault and the drugs, that's a terrible way of going about this discussion. He says that Finland has a better education system. He might be right. They didn't elect Trump yet, so there's options in that area. But when he says that college is access to power, especially for people in disadvantaged socioeconomic classes, I disagree wholeheartedly. It's a con job. 24,000 in debt, and half the people in college will never use these skills in the workplace. This is how the man is tricking you in this situation. And as the man in this situation, I should know. His discussion of access to power and rich people sending their kids to college, let me just say, Fields, Gates, Jobs, Zuckerberg are just four of the richest people, or were until Jobs died, that have all dropped out of college in order to do what Peter Thiel is now encouraging others to do. The last thing that I want to talk about is this discussion of money, because compared to the issues of safety, I honestly think it's less important. However, when we're talking about the money you can get on return of investment, that isn't return on investment. That is a flying bet that you will be one of the lucky people who just happens to get one of the jobs that you want. Ask yourself, how likely are you to get the life you want? Then ask yourself if college has kept its promises to you. I submit the answer to both as no, and I'm sorry for that, but truth hurts. His entire thesis is, college could be better. That is not overrated. Meryl Streep could be better. It doesn't mean she's overrated. These are not the same things. Just because college is expensive does not make it overrated. Remember the burdens we started with, because he's trying to make you forget them. That is, there is a certain value that we place as a society on higher education, and it is higher than it is actually worth. If he proves that there might be better alternatives to higher education, that doesn't prove anything one way or the other. I didn't address his initial closing argument because it was irrelevant. What is relevant is whether or not we value higher education appropriately. Is it valuable? Absolutely, it is valuable. A liberal arts degree might not get you that job at the newspaper that you want, but it will get you a higher paycheck. It will get you the ability to move up. It will give you the opportunity for promotions because you have oral communication skills that other people don't. You have taken classes in which you have leadership skills that others have not developed. These skills are important, and the wealthy elite don't want you to know that, because if you know that, then you ask for more. And when you ask for more, you get more. That is the value of higher education. It's not because you get placed in the job that you had set with your counselor when you were in sophomore year. That's not the value of higher education. The value is equalizing and is stratifying the society in which we live. If you agree with the affirmative, all you do is increase and amplify that stratification. The tokens that he brings out, Forbes, Fields, Jobs, those people are exceptions to the rule. And they are rolled out by elites in order to show you the idea of See, you can do it too. They don't want you to know that it is a fool's errand. Don't be a fool, okay? Stay in school. I want to talk about safety. He seems to believe that if you don't go into higher education, then you'll be safe. That women are safe as long as they don't go to college. That LGBT are safe as long as they don't go into higher education. That is not true. There is a danger everywhere. But the people who go through higher education are individuals that are able to address those issues head on. There are people that don't shy away from it as much as people that don't have higher education. They are able to bring lawsuits against their accusers. They're ones who are brave enough to stand up and get victimized again in the courtroom. Those are the heroes. Those people are the ones that we value. Those are the ones that are increasing the safety for others because that also has a ripple effect for everybody else. If you want to side with the affirmative, basically you are siding with ignorance. You are crossing your fingers that you are just going to feel your way around these sticky situations, right? 
that you are just going to know how to deal with it. But that's not the case. Statistics don't show it, and I think you know it. In the end, it doesn't matter how you measure it. If you're talking about individual safety, you're safer in higher education, at least in the idea that it is not more dangerous. If you're talking about a return on investment, it doesn't matter if it's a flying bet or you get the job that you want or don't want. The Chronicle of Higher Education points out that you get seven bucks back for every one dollar that you put in. Even if you switch majors like I did, even if you get a job that wasn't your first choice, the net worth of individuals with a degree is twice that without a degree. Ultimately, our society does not give enough value to higher education. It saved people on so many levels that we should be investing even more. My opponent is right that we should ask for more. The start of asking for more is being honest about where we are. Meaningful criticism of a serious social problem of people getting screwed over by colleges that make you promises they can't keep is not delegitimizing the process. We couldn't begin to challenge racism until we admitted that it was real. We couldn't begin to challenge patriarchy until we acknowledged it existed. Meaningful criticism of what is wrong with the system is in no way someone saying, no seriously, just go work for some corporation for minimum wage for as long as you want. So I agree, we need to ask for more, and it starts with being honest with what is wrong. Now, in his liberal arts degree discussion, he talks about newspapers. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. Newspapers? That's last century, bro. And it's all fake news now. And I don't believe that leadership skills only come from college. And I don't think that you do either. I think we value the Black Panthers, many of whom did not have a college education. I think we value the suffragettes. I think we value third wave feminism. And I think we value these people in a way that's not a matter of Oh well, if only they'd go to college, they're brave. I say bravery is in many places, and we should honor it wherever it is. When he says that my exceptions are the exceptions, I think I'm underlying how I'm winning. He's like, no, no, everyone isn't Peter Thiel, and he's right. However, let's talk danger. College can be incredibly dangerous, and his idea about how society values college don't line up. I'm still winning the college comedy view of what we should expect and I'm winning that college by itself can be incredibly dangerous. That one in four statistic is for college. It's not for the streets around the college. You would be safer on the sidewalk than you would be in the classroom in many of America's colleges and universities. I told you at the beginning that I was going to take a risk here by being honest with you. And I hope I've lived up to that. But the fact of the matter is, all of his facts about doubling earning power, that's the flying bet. Education should not be roulette. Could you imagine looking around at your education recruiters and then being like, congratulations and welcome to our school. Half of you will gain no benefit whatsoever and you'll leave with an average of 24,000 in debt. The few of you who do manage to get a good job will then be quoted by the Chronicle of Higher Education, which doesn't have an ax to grind in this discussion. So those are the tokens they use to make what you see now seem okay. That's what I think matters. And in order for us to start this discussion, we need to start by agreeing that college has been overvalued so we can do what I've been saying from the beginning and start to make it a place of justice and peace.